Welcome back guys. This is Island Life in Lockdown. We are spearfishing for survival and it's been really hard going. Fish have been scarce and deep. Which is why I'm jumping in here to say how proud I am of Katie for landing the Spanish mackerel. It is a very big deal to spear a fish this large and it could not have come at a better time. Right now we are truly depending on the ocean and a fish like this goes a very long way. You're really going to get a taste of our island survival in this episode. Mummy shot it. No, no, mummy shot them all. I shot both of the biggest fish today. I love the mouth open. You don't love the mouth open. Close your mouth. Okay, so we get asked all the time about filleting fish. So what we're going to show you today is just the basics. So this is a really easy fish to fillet, um, but it's a more difficult fish to skin. We're actually going to leave the skin on today because we're keeping this fish. And if you're freezing or keeping in the fridge, you always keep it skin on because it uh, stops it from drying out. There's two methods. So you always um, place a cut in the tail, just in front of this little fin there. Now, the way I'm going to do today is the more delicate way, where we're going to actually cut along up the, the backbone there, the spine there, and then over the spine and fill up the belly. So what you can then do is do a cut in the top side, just under that fin there. Okay. Sharpest knife possible is always good. And then you want to run your life, knife along here, cutting the flesh away um, from this top back there. Right Touching away, and it's going to lift off the side of the fish frame there. Cut all the way down until you hit the spine. So you see there, we've reached there spine and then you just want to keep lifting away now I've actually come over the top of those bones on a couple so I'm just going to cut away there because you want to leave all the bones on the frame and once you reach that big backbone there you got to sort of lift the, the fillet here and cut over the top of it there. Don't rinse it for too long here because the sharks will come in. <laughs> All right, I've actually um, felt just one little bone in there and a couple there. So I've cut, I was cutting really, really close to the spine there. So we can just come along afterwards and just trim them off. Yeah. When you're skinning a fish um, like mackerel or wahoo or something like that, I always find the best trick is to cut it into the size pieces that you're going to use and then skin it. Um, because it's such a thin skin, it always just tears off the fish otherwise. So you can see here where I've actually broken through there. And then just up near his rib cage here, you'd have to trim these out. You could debone it if you want to, but the guys are going to use all this meat in a fish soup anyway. So it doesn't really matter. So that part's really bony. Yeah, it's just the rib cage sits on the inside there, so it would sit there. I'm doing the second one a bit differently. If you're not ultra concerned about, it, about getting every skerrick of meat off it, this saves you a ton of time, but it does waste a little bit of the fish. But because the guy is actually going to cook this up, the family down the end, they're going to cook this frame up as a fish soup, it doesn't matter if there's a bit of fish left on there because we're using absolutely everything today the head, the tail, the fins, everything. So, that same method, except instead of going up and then along, you just take your knife and you run it until you hit a vertebrae and you lift your knife slightly and it's going to keep going So, I mean, technically it's probably got a tiny little bit less fish there, but realistically, for what we're doing, it's completely fine. All right? Nice. Done. All right. 
we're heading down to the other end of the island um, drop off this fish for the families that are living down there. Um, I think there's 10 people. That's a good amount of fish though. Small school or here. Everyone good? One fala isu. One fala tangiri. Tangiri born blem no mi bote kem mit. Hate blem kare mit. Kaiti na ya. Kaiti na su di me everything mit today bar and new balance na. Oh, you got a small trout. Mi tekem small pans ara bote kol piki ni ni ano. Come on, Kaiti. Kaiti ya man. <laughs> so we're going over to open up a consignment of cargo that came in just at the onset of our lockdown. Just because of where it came from, um, there was a huge gathering in a community right near this shop. So we just put it in ISO, like in the same little isolation area for three days, just as a precaution. So now we have eggs again. You, hey man, you care care. Ah, it's careful. Egg para dry no more. He no got him taste to you. Oh. And egg on top of egg. Me carry man fella. Be very man. Cause him no him no got him taste yet. The risk coming from this area was still incredibly low, but we're just being super cautious because. We're going into a lockdown anyway, so we might as well be really cautious in our preparations and then we don't have to worry. Unless I do drop some and break something, I'm not sure. <laughs> so for the foreseeable future, it's just the family and Rob and Otu on the island with us. So you'll get used to their faces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Oh, one tiny little crack, but it's okay. It hasn't touched anything else. Where are you from? I think me. That was my boss. That was my boss. Right now we have just come out of a lockdown. The whole lagoon has been locked down. All the communities have had to stay put. And the country as a whole is still somewhat on the lockdown. You can't travel between provinces. So yeah, we're kind of just trying to embrace what's going on. We're really, really fortunate here being that we do have the entire island as our sort of bubble. Um, we do really, really feel for a lot of our um, Solomon Island followers who follow the channel, we know that the situation is a lot more difficult for a lot of people who are in Honiara, any of the urban centres or even any of the local communities in Morovo um, that have a lot more condensed living, people are a lot close to each other and resources are really scarce at the moment. So we really feel for you guys. Um, we're just going to keep trying to put out some really positive island vibes, inspire people and yeah give people something to look forward to on a tuesday we're trying our best to see this as an opportunity for some more really good family time yeah. staying upbeat and making the most of what we have because we do realize how lucky we are so guys what's arrived <laughs> and yeah paddle boards <laughs>
What's he doing? He's licking it. Getting into a groove with the things that keep us positive is pretty important to us right now. Looking after ourselves, appreciating the resources we have and cultivating new resources too. Nothing is going to waste around here, including every minute of every day. More than ever, we are reminded of what is important in life and how to keep our heads high. Ale has the fish. Yeah. Yum. Really? What do you reckon? Philly asked for this one. You meant to be meal prepping, Excuse not me. meal snacking. Excuse me. I cooked till 12 30 last night. You got basil seeds? It's blowing some kale seeds. You can see something's coming on. What are you doing? Ale, what's this? Oh, dude, do you think you just lost it, mate? <laughs> <laughs>